So I wanted to film a makeup tips uh, video on competition makeup. So let's just jump right in. Where I'm usually starting when I'm doing somebody's makeup is I usually start with the eyes. The reason to do that is because you're going to put so much product on your eyes, there's a high likelihood that it's going to fall out. So start there, that way you can just clean it up. Makeup wipes, really nice to have on hand. These are the L'Oreal um, Ideal Clean. Um, these are in my kit for anybody I do makeup on. Uh, I like these the best. Share. Uh, start with the makeup. Um, on the eyes, uh, where we want to start is with a primer. So primers are going to hold the color, the pigment on your eyes all day, and you're not going to really have to worry about touching up or anything like that. So I'm going to show you some high-end and some drugstore style uh, makeup so that you don't feel like you have to blow a paycheck at Nordstrom or Sephora just to get on stage and look good if you're doing your makeup yourself. A big tip about that one is if you've never competed before, I would say don't do your own makeup. If you can, get hooked up with a makeup artist. Um, the good ones are going to book up fast. So uh, plan in advance. You don't want to wait till you're three weeks out from show to try to find somebody to do your face for you. If you have competed before, if you're familiar with stage makeup, if you're really good with doing makeup on your own, then go ahead and follow some of these tips. And maybe I'll even do like a few makeup tutorials on looks I've done before um, if you ask for it. So you'd have to ask in the comments below. Anyway, moving on. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer. Most people who are into makeup know about this stuff. It's fantastic. Um, drugstore end would be the Essence Eye Heart Stage. This stuff is pretty awesome. And it holds up just as well. I use this thing every day. Uh, next up, you want a base. I like to use like a cream base on especially like the moving part of the lid, like where you see it's lighter right here. So cream bases, you can do like um, little pots, like you could do... This is the color tattoo from Maybelline. Yes, yes. Um, I like to use these. And they have all different kinds of colors. So you can do kind of like, they even got skin tone ones. These are just as good as like a MAC paint pot, um, which is just another eyeshadow base. I like to use these NYX eyeshadow pencils. Uh, this one is milk. It's just a plain white. And this one is black bean and it's a black. So if I'm doing like a particularly dark look or some want something really dramatic on the outside of the eye, I'll put this guy on and your makeup just really adheres to it really, really nicely. So I really like those guys. Um, and I'm going to come back to this in a second. And the next step would be just your eyeshadow itself. So don't feel like you have to get a bunch of MAC products. There's a lot of really good stuff in the drugstore that I have a tendency to reach for when I'm doing stage makeup beyond MAC stuff. Because some of the MAC stuff, it just, it doesn't go on as well. Um, I'm also a really big fan though of Urban Decay and I'm going to get to that in a second. So these are two palettes from Wet n Wild um, and you can find these anywhere. They're less than $5 each. So this purple one, I've gotten some really great looks out of it. This might be more helpful. <laughs> um, I really like these. Um, and a lot of these are actually dupes for MAC colors anyway. Um, and then we have a really nice blue one. So definitely not an everyday palette, but for stage, they look fantastic. So glittery guy right here. Um, unless you're using like um, a, a really good base or MAC's Fix Plus, you're not really going to see that glitter. Now, when I'm usually working with somebody, um, they're usually asking for like a big smoky eye, lots of glitter, that kind of thing. So when you're looking through Pinterest or you're looking at other pictures from other competitors or thinking about things that you want on your eye, just keep in mind that on the stage itself, you're really not going to see all that glitter, all that shine, all that detail. A lot of it's just going to be washed out. 
So it's really going to be for like the up close photos or off stage that you're really going to notice all that amazing detail on the face. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be like drag queen style or anything like that in order to look nice. Um, when it comes to choosing colors, try to keep it a little bit more simple if you're doing it yourself. Um, sorry for as many times as I'm saying, um, I'm just a terrible thinker. So I don't, I don't have a tendency to go with like 15 different colors on the eye. And don't feel like you have to exactly match your suit either. So if you think about it, our bikini suits, our figure suits, they can be super colorful, especially those figure suits you've got. All this detail, all these rhinestones, everything that makes it all flashy. You don't have to take each and every one of those colors up on your face, you're gonna look like bozo. So keep it simple, keep it down to two or three colors. You want kind of like, if you want to make your eyes look very enhanced, go for like a lighter color, then a deeper color in the crease, and then a highlight, and you're pretty good. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that to look really, really yeah, good. Yeah, you're gonna want a really, really good base for it though. So you can find Pixie Epoxy, you can find um, other glitter glue, you can find, there's um, a glitter adhering primer that you can find from Too Faced. Eh, I don't even try to like mess with extra primers, extra sticky stuff. Here's what I've done instead, and it's looked beautiful on stage. I found these glitter eyeliners at Sephora. They weren't too expensive. Um, I might have even gotten them on clearance or sale or something. Um, but these guys, check that out. Ah, super dirty because I, I take out the, um, the stopper so I can really dig in there and, and get a ton of product and like really put it on my hand and pack it on my client's face, all over their face, all over. Just kidding. <laughs> but I will put a glittery eyeshadow on top of that or a little extra of that glitter on top of this and it will actually adhere to the eye much better and you don't have to go out and spend, you know, 20 extra dollars or extra money on something like that and that that's fun to like use on New Year's or use for a party and just put it on your wall, bottom um, the bottom of your eye and, and be all sparkly and pretty so coming back to this guy well, one of my more popular looks was done on Lisbeth you can find her picture actually in the beginning of this video and on my Facebook for some up close shots of the eye it was gold and red and purple and it was beautiful um, we did a lot of extra detail with that look and I had actually layered this guy um, this gold with some matte gold products and then this stuff and it was just like gold sparkle everywhere it was awesome so um, on myself I've used some like Mac Pro eyeshadows this one is one of my favorites. What is this called? Smutty Green. Wore this for my first show. It looked really nice with my teal suit. So there's that. So color ideas that you want to keep in mind though. Um, since you're going to be so incredibly dark, it really does change what you can put on your face. Normally, like if you're pale like myself, you can't really get away with these intense colors. Um, even even on like a night going out, it's, it's hard to pull that off. But when you're like this color, it's a different story. <laughs> um, but that also changes the tone of the color that you want to use. So for those highlights that, that I was just talking about, normally in like your everyday life, you would reach for a uh, very light, kind of a, like on a whiter side of a highlight color, like what I have on my brow right here is like a pinky white. Um, but on stage, on top of that color, it's not really going to come off like that that shiny white highlight look. It's going to look very ashy, can make, make you look a little dull. Um, so in this Urban Decay palette that I have, there's some great stage colors in there, as you can see. Um, this guy, Maui Wowie. One of my favorite colors in general. Um, it's a very light kind of silvery gold perfect as a highlight color you can see it there we go against my pasty pasty skin um on stage it looks very similar to that just because of the tone of the color on your face the tone of 
just your whole body, it changes everything. So you wanna change the colors that you'd wanna reach for. Steer away from the white um, on the brow bone. I've noticed though, I've done a few looks where we do white on like the moving part of the lid and blend it out with some other colors and it looks beautiful. So you play with it and you find out what you like. So if you're still pretty unsure of what kinds of colors you wanna reach for, take the foundation that you're gonna use put it on the back of your hand and start putting colors together and see how it looks together. Um, what looks most like the tan that uh, we use, we use like Jantana or just basic spray tans, is MAC um, NW45, so this guy. Much darker than how I look right now, but as you saw from the pictures at the beginning of the video, it, it flows pretty well with the rest of the tan. If you're light, on the fair side like myself or maybe a few shades darker than me, I would still say get a light wash of the color on your face before having your makeup done. Most girls don't like to put, put the tanner on their face. They're concerned about acne or they're concerned about sensitivity or anything like that. I haven't noticed it myself and it really, really does change the whole look of the makeup when you do have that base color on. Because as dark as this is, it doesn't, sit the same without that base color. So keep that in mind. If you're still uncomfortable with using the spray tan, there's plenty of face products that you can find um, over the counter or at the drugstore, I mean, that you can, are made for the face and you can just really darken up your own face using stuff that's actually meant for your face, if that bothers you. So once the eyeshadow is done, I'll go in for the eyeliner, Super important stuff right here. Like, as you can see, I did a very, very dramatic eye line today. Not like the typical everyday look, but just to kind of give you an idea of, you could definitely go for something very intense and have it, like, don't worry about it closing off your eye. I know that's a big concern with a lot of people. If you find that it still does make your eyes look smaller, then you can still use like a white eyeliner on the waterline and it'll open things right back up. Eyeliners that I've used when I've done other people's makeup. Uh, let's see. This guy is from Pixie. I found Pixie at Target. This eyeliner is $15. Couldn't believe how much I spent when I stocked up on this stuff. Um, but it's black noir. This stuff holds up really well on stage. It comes out very creamy, but when it sets, it sets very dry. You don't have to worry too hard about touching it up. Another one that I like that's way less money is the NYX, NYX eyeliner. This guy. Slide on, glide on, stay on. Too many names on this single pencil product. Put it right next to the Pixie. Not as intense. The NYX is the bigger swatch. But it's what I'm wearing right now. It works just fine and I've noticed it holds up really well on my eye. So I set this guy with a black eyeshadow and it holds up really well for me. I have very, very watery eyes, so that says a lot. So after I'm done with that, then I go in with, um, obviously you do your mascara. I mean, most girls know about mascara. Don't worry about it. And then false eyelashes. So everybody has their own opinion about the full false eyelash deal. Some people are gonna say, you know, don't go very intense, keep it kind of natural. Some girls are like, I want them big and bad and that kind of thing. I'm kind of like more in the middle when it comes to false eyelashes. So I'll show you a few that I really like. My favorite one to actually use on stage are these Katy Perry Cool Kitty. I'll figure this camera stuff out eventually, sorry. But as you can see, there's variation length, they look very separated. I really like the way that these look on stage and I've used these on many, many competitors. Next up, Ardell. These uh, guys are the Demi 120. So longer on the outside, shorter on the inside. Um, if it's too long, I'm, try it on your eye first. If it's still sitting too long, then just snip off the, um, the end over here and you can size it to fit your eye. And then if you really want to go big and bad, then we've got stuff like this. So don't feel like you have to reach for super, super intense eyelashes. I mean, you are going to have pictures that are up close and you don't have to worry about people 
all the way at the back of the auditorium, being able to see your eyelashes, it's not necessary. Um, and then I like to set with the Duo Lash Adhesive, and this is the dark tone one, so dig it. Moving away from the eyes. Next up, I'll go in with the foundation. Um, like I said, if you've got that good base tone on, you really don't have to add too much to the foundation. You don't have to worry about bronzer or contour or anything like that. You're already lean. You're already tan. <laughs> um, but I sometimes will add a bit of, I'm sorry about that hair deal, sometimes a bit of extra. It's really hard to find a tan uh, bronzer for something that dark. Um, so even this guy ends up just looking like a setting powder. So I will still use it just to add a little extra coverage, a little extra depth. Um, this guy is from Sally. Um, I really haven't found any other bronzers that are super, super dark enough. Um, drugstore wise, I'm not about to go spend like, you know, $30, $40 on a bronzer. You can if you want. Then I'll go in to brows. So this one is just mine. This is the, the taupe from Milani, the taupe eyeliner. These guys are retractable. They're super easy to use. They've got this spoolie on the other end. Dig it. So you can find a nice dark tone one of these. You don't want to use your average um, eyebrow color when it comes to doing stage makeup. This is a mistake I've made a number of times and I will not repeat again. But if you still go too light, you just don't really have that same frame to your face. So I like really, really dark colors. Like this would be good for like a lighter skin tone girl, a blonde like myself. This is much darker than I would use on a daily basis. Much better for stage. This is from MAC. It's really old, you probably can't find it anymore, so I don't, I'm not gonna bother with the color. But dark brown eyeshadow would suit very well. Um, and then you can just set it. This is like the Maybelline Clear Mascara. And doesn't that look awesome right now? Mm -hmm. So after that, um, cheeks. We're getting there, I promise. I'm talking a lot. But cheeks. I've got a few different things, and I think cheeks are one of my favorite things to do because it's, it's like the eye. You can add a ton of different colors. You can do contours and shading and have a lot of fun with it. One of my favorite colors to put on girls, this is MAC Dolly Mix. Super bright. Um, but like I've said, when it goes on top of that tan, it looks totally different. There's that guy right there. And it's something that, you know, if you wanted to use in your everyday life after you compete, I mean, you can, you can shear that stuff out. This guy I'm not going to open because it's all cracked, but this is a Sephora blush, and it's got this lighter color. This is a highlight color. Um, on some girls, I've noticed it looks a little ashy, so if you are have a very dark skin tone naturally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably go with this one. It'd probably look a little too ashy on you, but this other tone is beautiful. Um, it has a lot of warmth to it compared to the Dolly Mix, which has a lot of cool tone to it. This is Guava Glow from Sephora. It's falling apart. And you don't even have to use even that high of an end um, blush from NYX. NYX has some great blushes. This one would probably be a little bit too light. This is amber. Um, so I'd go for something quite a bit darker. This is just something I'll use on my darker skin tone clients, not competitors. So going back to Lisbeth, her look, because of her skin tone, because she's so naturally very, very dark, I can throw so much color on her face and have it just look beautiful. So she's one of my favorite skin tones to work on. Um, she's an awesome lady and so easy to work with anyway. So a couple of colors that I've used on her in the past. These are two NYX eyeshadows. One is Cherry and this one is Rust. Um, and I've used those as blushes on her and it looks, it looks beautiful. So, next up, once I've got the blush done, I'll do the under eye concealing. This one has been the best one that I've used, so I will just give you the exact details on this guy. This is the NYX HD Photogenic Concealer in shade tan, CW07. This guy works beautifully with that um, NW45. 
very brightening, beautiful, blends with the other color very well. And this stuff is not very expensive at all. I forget how much, but it's at Ulta. Um, and I think NYX products are making their way to Fred Meyer as well. Um, finishing steps would be highlighter. Go easy because there's a lot of bright light. You don't have to be subtle, but you don't want to like really cake it on. High end, this is NARS Albatross. It looks on an off white here. It's got a very gold tone to it. Um, and you can see, like, I'm a pale girl and I'm wearing it today. You know, you use the right technique and you're not going to go crazy. Um, you can kind of see it. There you go. Um, at the last two shows I did, so Emerald Cup and Iron Man of this year, I used a lot of albatross on the ladies. I just love the way that it added a lot of dimension to their face. Um, this guy, if you want to go on the, the less expensive side, um, you can find Hard Candy. Hard Candy? You can find Hard Candy at Walmart. This guy, this is Tiki. And the lid broke off. Um, this is another one that I'll use pretty frequently on myself on just like a daily basis. Um, right there. Really meh. It's, it's subtle, like, nothing, it's not going to make you look like an oil slick or anything on stage or with a ton of photography. So, there's that. Finishing sprays are going to, are going to definitely hold your makeup on so much better than just kind of letting it sit there. Don't use this as a finishing spray, sorry. I don't use the MAC Fix Plus as a finishing spray. That's not really, I think it's, it's true purpose. I use this to foil out eyeshadows to make them look wet or more metallic. Um, I'll use this to make an eyeliner out of an eyeshadow or if my client needs a little extra moisture I'll put it on, I'll spray it on their face before I put on the foundation. Or it works as a rehydrator. So say that you've kicked on your foundation and you've kicked on a ton of powder and you're starting to look a little bit like a mannequin, just spray it on and it actually brings out the natural life and vibrancy of your own skin again and it makes everything just blend and set better. This guy is the setting spray that I will use. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This guy comes with a purple lid that I chucked because it was in my way. So <laughs> the last to get, last tip I have to get the look that you want out of out of your face is really comes down to the brushes that you use so I would say save money when it comes to the makeup itself um, but get good brushes and take really good care of your skin and you're not gonna have to worry about you know trying to make an eyeshadow work or something like that so for the eye brushes themselves we'll start there I use I bought um, a Sigma kit a really long time ago and it's held up really, really nicely. So I've been basically using a lot of Sigma um, eyeshadow brushes for a really, really long time. These are four brushes that I would say would be most necessary for your look. So we'll start with this guy. So you want a flat, there we go. You want a flat packing brush, and that's what this guy does. So when you're, there we go. When you're looking at this guy, can I get it to focus? It's flat, it's kind of rounded. And then when it, you're putting it on your eye, it kind of just packs it on really, really nicely. So I'm not gonna even give you the number because I know this is old numbering, but a flat packing brush. Any um, eye makeup brush that you're kind of lusting after or you know that you need but you don't wanna spend a lot of money on, go to Michael's, go to the art store because makeup brushes are actually based off artist brushes and you can find pretty much anything you need at at uh, an art store so don't feel like you have to once again go spend 20 30 dollars on a single brush or 150 dollars on a brush kit um, you know check out the art art store and if you're really not finding what you're looking for then check out Ulta or Sephora or then go up from there next up we have pencil pencil brush so you can see, pretty rounded, short tip. This guy, wow, my hands are really not helping in that situation. But to get uh, that that crease, 
this is what I used to get that more defined kind of cut crease look that I have going on today. Also, I like to use these to smoke out the bottom lash line. So one of these guys, again, you can find something like this at the art store, you can find something really close. When you're looking at makeup brushes, know that everybody has different eye shapes, everybody has a different amount of eye lid space to work with. I'm not somebody who has a ton to work with, I actually have hooded eyes so that like when you're looking at me straight on, like you really can't see too much of what I have going on on my lid itself unless I continue to talk with my eyebrows, which I always do. So, next up, blending brush. Now, this guy's pretty large, like if we kind of see it compared to my eye, it's gonna cover a fair amount of space when I go to blend something out. So if I wanna blend out the top color, if I wanna do like kind of a smoky, washed out look, I'll use something like this on myself or my client. This guy offers a ton of control. This is just an angled liner brush. So I'll use it for um, getting a, a tight line on eyeliner. Um, I actually ended up using this for my eyebrows instead, um, just because I, I feel like it offers kind of like the best amount of control for my eyebrows. Um, what I end up using a lot on my bottom lash line, and this is what I use today, kind of apply that dark color, kind of smudge it a little bit. This guy's from Sephora. Ooh, what's the smoky liner brush? Yeah. This guy's very pointy. So, offers a ton of control. Great for eyeliner. Moving on, because you're probably bored. This guy is from Real Techniques. I like to use it for a really controlled amount of blending of color. Uh, it's the shading brush. Got this one in a kit. You can find Real Techniques online, on Amazon, Ulta, uh, even Walmart. Yeah. For face brushes, when I'm applying the foundation, I have a few different face brushes, but when it comes to applying that color, I'm sorry about shaking that, um, when it comes to applying that foundation color, I always keep going back to this guy. So this is the Expert Face Brush. Love it. It's so soft. So nice to work with. Um, for everyday looks, um, it's great for powder, um, blending out contour, or applying a liquid foundation. This guy is the Blush Brush from Sonia Kashuk. Really nice angle, it offers a ton of control. I use this one every day for applying my blush. It almost didn't come out of my face properly. This guy, lastly, is from e.l.f. This is the blush brush from e.l.f. I'll use this one for um, the darker contour kind of blush or for contouring my cheek and lips. You either want to go for kind of like a cool tone color or a very warm tone color. You'll know based on the look, the general look that you have or your kind of like preferences on where you want to go in that department. What I'd like to do is actually contrast it with the eye itself. So on Robin, we did a very like blue, purple, very nice, smoky, gem toned eye, and then kind of like a pink coral lip. So the contrast of the warm tone and the cool tone worked really, really well. So I have a huge collection of lip products and they're all really inexpensive stuff. Um, when I'm doing competition makeup, I'd like to really mix and match, match and create the perfect tone for my client. And then I'll just combine it in one of these little pot guys. So this is just one of my many little bags of lipstick. I'll just chop these things up, mix it together, and then create my own custom, custom tones. So this is just a nice kind of like warm coral pink that I created to use on stage. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be high end. It just has to last the time that you're on stage. Um, I, that being said, I do like to use some high end stuff every once in a while. Um, on myself, on my first show, I used a MAC Pro Longwear lip something 
Um, it was vibrant and red and daring and bold and it was just really fun to use. So it depends on what you're going after. Um, but I do want to show just for the sake of saving a few dollars um, what you can do as far as a uh, drugstore or kind of lower end, less expensive. I have a couple of NYX products right here. This is the retractable lip liner. As you can see, this color is plum. It's waterproof. It's pretty. Um, great for a berry or red or dark, dark pink lip. So I frequently use something like that. Next up, I have NYX lip liner pencil in citrine. I'll put it right next to the other guy. Softer, cool tone pink. Um, I'm a red lipstick fan, like, just, I freaking love it. So this is the, this is the NYX, um, what, not what? All right, evidently it's the NYX lip smacking fun colors. And this guy, super matte, dark red, stinking gorgeous. Oh, loves. And the color is Snow White. Um, this one, Revlon. This is one of my favorite Revlon colors, and I love using it. So, again, going back to how you can get washed out on stage, whatever you put on your lips, especially if it's shiny, it's going to fade out. It's going to get uh, washed out a lot by those incredibly bright stage lights. So definitely go for a very punched up color. So this is not a punched up color at all. This is Orchid from Revlon. This is going to look very kind of soft, light pink. So if you have that kind of bombshell look. So if you saw at the beginning of the video, there was Amy, gorgeous blonde, bright blonde curly hair we did super smoky dark eyes and then really faint lips so in the up close picture in just kind of like a mid-tone pink but on stage it was super super nude just because those lights are so bright so keep that in mind anything is going to get washed out about 30 40 percent maybe even 50 percent of that color is just going to be gone by the time you hit the stage so don't be afraid to use a bit of color when you get up there Again, play around, um, see what you like, see what works with the eye and, and the suit and the whole genre that you're going for. If you're going to go for some sexy bombshell look, then, you know, use a lipstick that's going to work for that. Um, glosses. You don't have to necessarily use a gloss when you're stepping on stage. Um, one that I really liked using at Iron Man was the Kiss Gloss from NYC. This guy. Um, Soho Sweet Pea. Thanks for watching guys. I'm hoping this got you thinking about competition makeup, covered a lot of the basics for you. I know there's going to be a lot of detail questions, so feel free to include them in the comments below. And hopefully there will be a future video where I can answer those, or if I don't, I will just answer you right below. Have a look at some of my um, previous makeup work on Facebook or Instagram. The information is going to be below for you, so just click the links, snoop around, have some fun, and then definitely get back to me on maybe a tutorial that you'd like to see or a look that you have questions about. But until then, thanks guys.